want to hunt. Raids will go Mantle or BKB or both want to fight, right? So I think for Na'Vi, it really is going to be the make sure that the first 10 minutes goes well for them and then play on that first timing. And the scary thing if you're a Na'Vi fan was this was the logic of their game one draft. They had the good lanes. They had the earlier timings. But as a team, they just couldn't sync up and actually coordinate to convert that into the game. But if there ever was a time for this to happen, it is with these heroes. I, I kind of love in this Klee draft. I, I think I'm leaning them pretty heavily sure, for this game. Yeah. I think I uh, Na'Vi doesn't hit high ground very nicely. So as many kills as they get, they need to make sure they get kills without losing enough resources that they can't take, you know, objectives away, towers away from Team Klee. And that's where Arc Warden will reign supreme, right? If your opponent doesn't take buildings, you throw the bubble down, you prolong, you kite, you split push. You can hurt your opponent. Yeah, and I feel like y your initiation on Navi is kind of scuffed as well. Like, you know, if, if, if you're not ahead, then just a slark yeeting into this fight with like an Aghanims or something and the Kunker just trying to like wander in. I mean, sure, we've seen we've seen Kunker do this hundreds of times where he just literally just A clicks into the fight with uh, Blade Mail, but all the same, it is still uh, not the cleanest way, especially against an Arcorden who you just don't want to let get the position on you, so... I do feel like they kind of gave Klee the opportunity to do this. You know, there seems to be the answer which Navi was looking for on this. This could be cute. Oh, beautifully scouted from Kami, though. Is that going to get them away? I think it is. That was super heads up. I mean, they've been doing this a lot, Navi, but even still, that was, that was very nice. Yep, both teams did meet at the uh, in the Dire Jungle, so there was a little bit of prior information going there. But, yep, yeah. overall. Nice little survival, and uh, yeah, lanes will commence. I think uh, okay. both safe lanes are ideally looking to, uh, I mean, get more out of the lane than expected. I think Slark should be able to take a lot of fight to them. And I think Arc Warden, when you pick Arc Warden like this for the safe lane, you you do actually have a little bit of kill threat, especially when, if you hit three first or hit level two first. Um, I think that's super important. Like, this entire safe lane, I think, is based on who gets level 2 first. We'll see who that ends up being. Meanwhile, I did just want to point out that um, they did the same thing to Slark, where they blocked his wave. They pushed it under tower. She gets to. Giga Chat doesn't even care. Is up in the top side. Nefret's getting pretty down low here and will eventually tick out to the Blood Grenade and to the Leech Seed. Kami getting first blood. Trying to bring down Daze as well. Has the Spark Wraith available, but won't be... Oh, will be able to finish it. the job. Catches him out. Beautifully done by the Arc Warden. And what a way to start the lane. Double kill? All right. They didn't even need level two. It was just constant clicks and then with Le Leech Seed and just really nice place to Spark Wraiths. They were able to take down Nefret. So, uh, yeah, Leech Seed, Blood gotta Grenade. Be careful. Such a sick combo. But anyway, Shigetsu did a nice thing where he managed to get every single CS under tower by himself, which is very... Very unusual for a carry at level one, especially Slark. He doesn't hit particularly hard, but <laughs> did just want to point that out. But he's now been completely <laughs> eclipsed by Cami, so unlucky, buddy. Oh my god! When you started that, I was like, "Damn, you're about to flame the hell out of Shigetsu right now." Like unconventional for this player. He never hits CS under two. Yeah. Like, Jesus, <laughs> no, that's great. Like, yeah. <laughs> you want entry to game three? Yeah, I, I guy... wish I was ballsy enough to say things like that, but. Uh... I think you're it's, I think it's you're allowed just to do mean. it if the stats align with it, you know? Like if you'd gone back and watched twenty-five replays and you found out that he had like a twenty percent efficiency on the tower, then you say yeah, right. Yeah. And then if anyone gets mad, just be like, facts don't care about your feelings. There you go. Snowflake. Yeah, you get him king. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <sighs> All right, how's our mid lane going? Haven't really paid much attention, but no, you're absolutely right. The storm is uh, it's like a kind of wrecking Melodil here. So far, so good. I mean, there is still a full wave for Melodil to take, which uh, will bring it back a little bit, but nope. Youngji gets a deny on the range creep, so yeah, tough times for the pirate man in the middle lane. The Youngji kind of lays a bit of a smackdown upon him. Gonna hit that level six, probably in good timing. We'll see if they make any rotations in towards the middle lane before the storm hits six, you know, get him while he's vulnerable. Yeah, we see somewhat that should be possible right with uh, a Marcy in the team you just need to tp use that rebound jump in 
if the if your off lane is in a good position, then Marcy easily could be ganking the storms here at pre six. But with the double kill and Arc Warden getting the early lead, Ooh. doesn't look to be the case. <laughs> We're in the same yeah, vibe Daze. there. Like, don't do it. Don't do it, Dave. He like disposed the tree forward, and he's like, "Oh, cool, <laughs> a free tumblers toy." Thank you. So now Dade is salving up, potentially off map for a little bit. Top lane is pushing, and there's a double range creep. So if there was a window to try and kill uh, Young G, it would be in the next, you know, minute or so because he is very close to six. Yeah, this. Uh... Unsurprisingly, this top lane is, is not really recovered super well, so we're going to have this Razor eh, play a bit of a poverty game. It's actually queued up the power treads and Midas, so that gives you some insight into how Nefred's looking at oh, taking this no. one. And Slark can sometimes buy Midas. This is like Here we go, opposite middle lane. Of why I perceived it. Movement's coming into the Storm Spirit. They see him the moment they get off the X marks. They should be able to bring him down here. Day is just trying to finish the job and will be able to do so. I think Zayat's actually just get caught on the tail edge of that rebound stun, which stopped him being able to come in. But meanwhile, they've killed off Nefrit over on the top side. Day is just about going to be able to get away from Zayat's here as he throws down those fire spirits, but not quite enough to get a kill. So the middle laner will just die for nothing. I think if you're... Uh... Team Klee here, you're pretty happy with that Storm Spirit. Sure, you die, but you kind of expect that Storm pre-6. They're going to gank me once, right? They're going to want to try and annoy me. And the fact that Dream has got a double kill at the start, oh, sorry, Kami has got a double kill at the start, plus another kill on Razor due to Marcy going middle. Like this Midas, it's only, what, 500 gold away? That is going to be a very quick Midas for the safe lane arc warden. This top lane, the, the concept of countering the lane with Razor Marcy... Uh, has fallen very flat. Of course, Ark was picked in response, but I don't think they were ready for an Ark Warden at all. Yeah, it's definitely thrown them, thrown them for a, a bit of a loop here, and he's having a great time so far. Going to be a huge issue for oh, them to deal with later on. Middle. And here we go, though. Uh, yeah, and they're also going on to Cami up at the top side as well with the rotation in from Maldi. It might just be enough. It will. They finally bring him down. The uh, issue, rising issue, has been addressed somewhat. And that was a great time to kill him as well, because he was heading for a terrifying, like, seven-minute timing on that Midas. But they take I him apologize. down. I apologize. That was my fault. I did say boat middle. That was that was my bad. Hands up. Yeah. Apo apologize to Earson. I'm sorry, Earson. Good boy. Thank you. Now they will try and... I mean, uh, Navi really st overstaying their welcome here up in the top side. That said, nice jump in. They're going for him again. What the hell? They go for the Arc Warden no, for a second uh, time around. They need to bring heroes here. They need to help them out, but they're just not going to do so. He will drop, sure, till the end gets a return kill, but nowhere near worth it as Nefrit gets a double and the tower falls. <laughs> in what world would you ever expect the, the what, the three to four kill, or three kill Arc Warden having a great time? To, sure, die once, that's just the twin gate thing. But the TP in and to die again, even the Slark throwing himself through the twin gate to really make sure that this yeah. uh, Kami Arc Warden just... Wow. 100 gold away from Midas, having to do the Walk of Shame back to top lane. This Razor who was... So painful. Close to having nothing is also like 500 gold away from his own Midas. Like, yeah, this top lane just got completely broken open and... It's just due to the Twin Gates. Twin Gates just gave Na'Vi all the fighting capabilities they needed in a very much losing lane. If you'd have told me like four minutes ago that these guys were going to hit their Midas's at like around the same time, then I would have called you a psychopath. I would, I would have committed you to a mental ward. I'm casting for one right now. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. <laughs> Got dinner time in an hour. Gotta get, wrap this game up quick. Yeah, sliding in under the cell door. <laughs> <laughs> Plastic knives and forks, just in case. Oh, Ooh, young G. Zipping, zapping, get himself away. We'll be all right. Okay, so what's going to happen now for Na'Vi? I think Na'Vi... It really, okay, Slark is going uh, for Diffusal Blade. Oh, till and the end, getting run down again. Dead. Yeah, we're starting to see this this plan play out. You know, the, the Marcy Razor... Yep. It's a nice combo. It's a very nice combo. These two just buff each other up in the most perfect way possible. 
Razor gives you the vision and the slow from the plasma field. That allows Marcy to jump in with the rebound. The rebound speeds up the Razor for Static Link. Dispose if you need it as well. And I think this is going to be Na'Vi's best window. The fact that they recovered this top lane means that this Arc Warden isn't isn't on autopilot towards his items. And the, the issues that we're mentioning in the draft about the damage, I think it kind of creeps back into the game now where it's like, okay, Arc's having to recover. We're still yet to see Storm or Brewmaster enter the game. And Tree Phoenix are a little bit under leveled. I think for Na'Vi, they're, they're going, wait, we can we can do this. We've got some we've got some fight in us. And it will be interesting to see how Na'Vi want to approach that. Are they going to wait for the Blade Melancunca? Is the Diffusal on Slark a big enough timing to go for a fight? I think that there is a little bit of discrepancy now in the three cores, right? Because you've got one bind Diffusal. Kunku's got Blade Mail, which is kind of in the Diffusal realm of aggression. But then you have the Midas on Razor. So it's like everyone's a little bit around the place. And maybe Na'Vi wants to play a little bit more reserved. But I would like to yeah. see them just break the map and keep know. trying to fight. As a counterpoint, I'm not sure Razor is a hero which like necessarily needs a decent item to be active. I think he's going to be mm -hmm. happy playing with his Blade Mail, Conquer, and his Diffusal Slark with just yeah. a Midas of his own. It's just he has a thousand HP. So it's just a little bit scary in that regard. But I yeah. feel like if he if he plays a farm game, this game is really hard. So I think he does like like you're saying, I think even though he went for Midas, he needs to play as if he's got like an ogre axe in his inventory. That type of yeah. uh, let me just run at them real quick. Uh disconnect Lay's just uh having some connection issues, so we'll get a, a minute to kind of discuss things. But uh yeah, it's kinda cammy who has had the most volatile game. Incredible start into getting killed twice right before he bought his Midas. Like, you know, we talk about kills and sure, like, it's it's annoying dying. It's super annoying dying when you're like 100 gold off your Midas twice in a row. Like, that is a horrible it's feeling. Su it's super annoying. But for an Arc Warden, it's super great feeling for the enemy team because, my God, do not... Like, Arc Warden's like the most toxic hero to buy a Midas because he gets it you blink and suddenly he's got like a maelstrom you blink again he's got boots to travel one more time and it's like okay this game just became the arc warden show right so if there yeah, ever was a hero a to be silly. happy that this is happening to this is like the hero yeah and i remember when they made the changes to midas and i was like surely arc warden's just busted now because you're always getting full efficiency from that tempest double whereas before Oh, they found it was him. a little harder. They have indeed found him. Kami, he's dead again. He will use the Tempest double, but uh, the hero is going to drop. And now, well, they're going to look for a little bit of revenge. Day's going to be that target. Day's trying to run. The uh, rebound has run off, and the boat buff's running off as well, but they're just going to turn around and, well, try and commit to this one. Nefrit goes for the link. That's going to get broken up, and with the split, they're going to be able to bring down Nefrit instead. And he is going to get killed off. And as you see, pretty squishy there on the razor when he does turn to the engagements. Oh, Storm. Oh, Melodil. Melodil. Catching out Young G. They're going to get the kill. Storm takes a step too far forward, and that's going to end his life until the end as well. Two heroes caught out in the middle side for seemingly not much reason. He only had like 150, 200 mana, so he went for a zip, and it wasn't long enough to eat through the time where Melodil could just hold X and bring him back. And then, yeah, just nice X torrent on a on a Storm Spirit there. And yeah, they're dying. Good. Good aggressive moves coming out from Na'Vi in general. But every Definitely. time they get an aggressive move, it's always reset and hit creeps. Like, they, their draft is not built around, like, kill kill hero hit tower, right? It's always kill hero. Where's that next jungle camp? Where's that next kind of creep wave to push out? If there ever was a time for Razor to go Aghanims, it's going to be this game. <laughs> Man to be, give me Aghanims. We need some tower damage. Again, Eye of Storm doesn't hit towers if you buy agonims it then does it also gives you an additional strike um, in your ultimate so we'll see if Whoa, they do bottom lane. yeah they know that uh, lace currently has no primal splits they're trying to take advantage of that but till the end comes in beautiful overgrowth catching the slark when he doesn't have the dark pact also they'll kill off melody looks like slark will be able to get himself away so just a singular kill for them but they keep their brewmaster alive as well big win for clee in the bottom side Although that said, they did just give away the Tempest, I think. I'm no, not sure if you got the gold out. for it. Timed it. Out. it timed, timed out. Okay, that's yeah. fine.
But they're going for him again. What is this? Look at how deep they're going. Kami, he sees it, but can he do anything about it? No, he cannot. They connect in with the rebound, and in comes the torrent. In comes the boat. How deep do these guys go? And will they be punished for it? I don't think so. Yeah, it's this observable. It's lasted it in its full duration. Yeah. Just fully scouting out our coordinate and now Dyer, they're trying to smoke up themselves. They're trying to find a, a little bit of a rebuttal, but there's no overgrowth, so it's all on Storm. Yeah, it's DD Storm though, so it should be enough, oh, although yeah. he did kind of overzip here. Doesn't matter. No one's coming in to help him. No boat available, so should be an easy pickoff. They're even going for more. Merge though, with of course that blade mail being a threat, and now Ice Blast commits. Young Chi getting rebound. very low, doesn't have mana, might need some help. Daze comes in, finishes the job beautifully done from the Marcy. Oh, he's playing it so well. Daze Marcy is, is quite the dream to watch, but might be getting cooked down Notice. right now. Zayas is upon him along with these Brulings. Should be the end for him. Rebound available in one ooh. second, cannot get it off. Will be dropping. Layers gets the kill. Shigetsu, though, running on in. They've got the X marks and the torrent out onto the Phoenix. Bye bye, Zayats. He gets finished off as well. Over on the side, though, Maldik falls. Kami's back and gets himself a kill to try and drag himself back into this game. Surviving through the constant ganks which are heading these ways. Well, not surviving through them, but finding a little bit of. a bit of revenge. Now, uh, Tree needs to find the ward. They're picking out? Okay. And they got it. Nice. I mean, I want to say, like, it. It, it looks great for Na'Vi, right? They're going for these deep plays. They're going for the big kills. They're forcing these skirmishes, which their team obviously does well in. But at the same time, like, it's very scrappy. It's taken a very long time. And you're playing into Midas's. So these guys, you know, they, they don't really mind if these fights are taking a while. As long as they're going even, then Midas isn't going to make their economy pull ahead regardless, so. I think the main thing that happens in these scenarios oh, is... Oh, Kami, no. Oh, Shigetsu, that was... Oh. Dude. So he went One. from farming to top top side of the map, the top camps, twin gated, and then just hugged the far right side, expecting him to go there because they were dewarding top and they saw. Oh, and he hits the tree there. as well! <laughs> he finds the tree and cast him with his pants down. Oh, Shigetsu. That I didn't expect amazing. him to be the carrier for the series, but he's 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 really impressing me right now. Again, the Shigetsu flame, man. You said he couldn't see us on the tower, and that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a lot of beef with this guy. So much beef. No, um, no. I love the way he's playing. Just thinking for the kill. Um, and uh, what was my point? I was trying to make. Oh yeah, our Gordon. So I think our Gordon is that hero that even when you're killing him, he's still finding that it worth. Like you mentioned it before, the efficiency of Midas is in the hero. Like it's, it's one of those that even you need to beat him down like time and time again. Like he's got Maelstrom, he's got Midas, he's going towards Dragonlance and Boots to Travel. And I think Navi now they have a 4k lead. We're probably gonna gonna be looking towards a Roshan in the next, I'd say, I'd say next like six to ten minutes. Like they're not rushing towards it. They're actually really bad at doing Roshan, I'd say. Um, but. If an opportunity presents itself, whether outside the pit with a kill, they might try to do it. But they now kind of like reset farm mode, get an Ags on Kunker, get a Manta on Razor, and find those free kills when they can. It's hard to continually be aggressive, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Like, it is impossible to always shut down Ark the entire time. Yeah, but they put the fear of God into him as well. Like, I'm watching him move around the map and. He is just being quite inefficient with how he would move around this map normally because he's just taking the safest possible route. So, looking for a bit of revenge up in the top side. Day's going to get beaten down here. Although, that said, he's turning around with the sidekick and unleash. That's actually going to help him survive through it. Storm has to zip away. That link was upon him. you got to respect it. So, they won't be getting the kill. Feels a little bad for Klee. That's when you go very, for the budget kill and you don't even get that, it's... Uh... Yeah, it feels bad, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> she gets it, just comes leaping over the trees under the tier one, looking for Zayad. So I was like, what the hell are you doing, bro? Gets himself <laughs> away, but still forces a rotation, forces reactions. It's exactly what she gets wanted from this. Yep. Manta is now complete for the Razor. So if there ever was a time for Na'Vi to drag the Razor into some engagements, it would be now. You can... Manta off the uh, flux, you can get rid of overgrowth. Um, 
There's also some other cheap spells in the mix, but they're probably the big two that you'd want to use it for defensively. And the other thing as well with uh, the uh, Slark and something that we don't see too often because Slark's not picked is it's just a vision game, right? Like in a game where you have Arc Warden, which is about protecting his farm, how do you stop that when there's a Slark always poking his head in, finding that Observer Ward? Like the vision for Dyer is pretty awkward. Ooh, so can they get him? Can they get him? Yes, they can. No supernova coming out today. The diffuser will help him make sure of that as well as they sap away the phoenix's mana. With no supernova, it's very hard to fight. Kind of surprised Storm didn't go for a Midas too. Like you got Brood Midas, Arc Midas. But everyone could have bought. Everyone could have bought Midas. Just could have kept farming. Imagine what could have been. This game could have been so much, so much better. <laughs> I mean, I hope people realize that there was a, a really weak attempt at doing sarcasm there, but... Indeed. Dyer are looking for the late game. They are, they are, which is kind of uh, what we expected, to be honest with you. Every single game of the series so far, Clea have been uh, looking for the late game, not super interested. I'm not sure if this is a team thing or just uh, how they view the meta thing. Mm, I think it's a game-specific thing as well, in this scenario. But also their drafts have been slightly greedy, yeah. I'd say, across the board. All three games are kind of suggested at it. Yeah. Uh, Zayat's getting jumped upon here. He's trying not to use that supernova, and he's succeeding at the moment. They're going to go and hide under their ward. But look at you guys just coming in. Season stack already taken two. Oh, actually, AA got one of those. Love it when Ice Vortex gets you a kill on an Ancient Creep. Another pause. Riveting stuff. Indeed, indeed. Just a few more connection issues coming out from Klee, but yeah, do they come and contest this? I, I highly doubt. Are they going to do anything about Navi just sitting in their triangle right now? Yeah, not really. So that is always the um, the downside of a tree phoenix is because you are good at area control if you're already in the area. When you're trying to go to new areas, it's a little bit hard. Sure, Tree can do that with Shard and a Blink. And he already has a Shard right now, but yeah, it's going to be a little bit difficult for Klee. Also, it doesn't, doesn't help that your Arc Warden is so far of a backliner that it's your Brew needs to come, your Tree needs to come. Then like, you basically need like four heroes just to do anything, I think, for Clear at the moment. And that's where Na'Vi yeah. are just sweeping across the map. They're trying to find Young G. They do have the Axe, though. Oh, nice catch from Shigetsu. Good reactions. Is it going to be enough? Well, maybe. The Aghanims just chain locked down onto the Storm. They've got him. Beautifully done from Shigetsu again. Finding the Storm. Killing it off. 100 to 0 pretty much just from the Slark. He's getting Z so much out of this map right now. And Zayat's trying to make a beautiful play there. The Icarus dives in with the four staff to try and like mid-swoop save the Storm Spirit from the control, but... Yeah, wasn't able to do it, and Na'Vi, they continue to apply pressure on this Razor. We keep talking about, oh, when's he going to join the fight? He kind of feels like the carry in this game, right, Nifra? He used to be a carry player before he moved to offlane. He is just happily farming up, kind of role-playing uh, ATF right now, making sure that yeah. he's going to hit his big timings. He's got Manta, he's got the Mithril Hammer. He's nearly like one and a half components away from that BKB. No, he's going to be a menace, that's for sure. Knew that his team would be very strong without him in the early points of the game, so just decided to go for this Midas, and looking like it's going to pay off at least so far. Menajul's Kuru did just die with the Aghanims on it, so there's a little bit of like, ah, uh, okay, he was 500 gold away, but still, it's he would have got the 500 gold in a minute or so. But yeah. Aghanims potentially delayed ever so slightly due to that. And then, wait, is this the same? Okay, it's the same smoke. This is really, really awkward for Klee, right? They smoked all the way to top, found nothing, then dragged the same heroes all the way to the bottom side of the map. They just spent the entire duration of smoke just wandering the realm of Dota and found nothing. Their reward will be a tier one tower. So at this stage of the game, it's okay to lose. <laughs> It's always okay to lose. <laughs> Contact as long as there. you learn. 
<laughs> Slightly <laughs> spicy tormentor time. Maldi. Pushing the limits, but they do get themselves a shard. That will go on to the uh, ancient apparition, so. You get that nice zesty little, uh, little, little ice blast now coming out from them. Yeah, looking at Roshan, it's, it, it, it'll it take a while, but Marcy definitely helps with their ability to take Roche, so would like to see them start looking into uh, into that pit pretty soon on the side of uh, Na'Vi. For some reason when you said Na'Vi, my brain just wanted to start chanting Na'Vi. But I, of course... Uh, I see, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You've got that early... Some nostalgia. <laughs> Dota, EU. Yeah, it was blood. happening at TI, to be fair. For some reason, when some teams are playing, just fans would just start belting out Na'Vi for no reason. It's yeah, it's one of those true. things which just comes unbidden sometimes, just like the USA chant to anybody who is uh, from the USA or has entered the USA at any point in their lives. <laughs> is, is that allowed to chant it? Yeah, it's like a parasite. But yeah, I mean, clearly they're perfectly happy with the game kind of stalling out a bit here. They've even got this um, Radiance Brewmaster who's, you know, Midas Radiance Brew, going to farm pretty fast, going to be a bit of a beast in the fights as well. Only gonna get stronger. Phoenix is I gonna mean, go back for his own Midas. Yeah, like this is really wow. play for that high ground fight. And you see on the minimap, Marcy is drawing. Like guys, look at where they are farming. We we probably could break them soon. Razor has the BKB coming out now. If there ever was a time for Navi to to try and make some plays, and you'd expect it to be now. I guess the the main issue for Navi is. They've already simplified the map quite a lot because there's only one tier two left. So like what oh so there's two tier two, sorry, but it's like do you really want to rush towards a tier two as your main objective, like mid and bot? Like Roshan's kind of the, the key goal here. And I did not expect Team Klee of all teams to be the ones Ooh. smoking up, but they are trying to be the aggressors here. Yeah, they want to make a fight happen on their own terms. Always respect that. What is their initiation angle though? Looking like they're going to be looking to start things off with the Tree and Protector. Go for the Overgrowth and, well, they're going to find an easy pick here. Maladie will be killed off. Does manage to get the Ice Blast off at least onto three heroes, but no response coming out from the side of Na'Vi just yet. They're all set up at the top side looking they're for Roshan. That is what Ooh. they need. They're going through the gate. They're going to fight. Looks like it. No AA though. This is kind of sketchy. They're looking at Nefra right now. Can they bring him down in time? He has got that BKB. Is going to get it off. The damage coming out from Kami on the high ground is significant. And the egg is coming through as well. Covering them from that as well. Torrent Storm. It's annoying. And Daze just jumps in by himself on the Mercy and kills off the egg solo. Does pay for it with his life. But Shigetsu now has a bunch of low health heroes just to reap. Kami uses the orb. Trying to get himself away. Trying to sit inside the vent diagram of life. And with the Sunray coming through as well. Is this working? Is this working? No, it is not. He gets a kill. Slug. He's very, very low, out of resources, out of health, tries to jump away, but dies to Young G. The tick from the Witchblade finishes the job. Marley in trouble now as well. He's going to fall and Klee, they put it together. Somehow, they win the fight. The Twin Gate was such an assistance for, for, for Team Klee, right? The fact that Na'Vi, they smoke up. Roshan's alive, of course. They don't really want to hit Roshan. So they go through Gate Top. Then they, they realize, wait a second... They're now bottom, so they awkwardly one by one go down, and we saw the full effect of why Phoenix is good against Kunku. Kunku goes in, throws every spell, but then has to disengage from the egg. Slark's already entered, Razor's already BKB'd because he's been jumped on. It's such a weird fight, and I think Days was so close to being the MVP of that engagement. He jumps in, uses the Unleash to kill off the egg. We mentioned who's the egg hitter. Of course, Marcy can be that egg hitter if she gets into the fight, but for Na'Vi, with the lead that they have and how volatile this game can be for them to take fights like that where they run Dang. through twin gates it probably isn't the one and days under the cover of invis is able to find zayats nice jump back nice bit of patience there but yeah navi kind of uh having a little bit of a blunder at the 24 minute mark yeah yeah for sure i thought it was a bit of hope for them when they were able to kill off that egg but you know torrent storm is just so annoying it's, it, it's very hard to fight into that even when you have that egg coming down, but it didn't matter in the end. You know, that Slark, he wasn't able to get in. Nefrit knocked too low at the beginning, as you say, because of that gate. Just too many things going right for Klee. But that said, Roshan is now going to belong to Na'Vi. 
basically without their Phoenix, there's no way they could take a team fight and to be honest, they just don't own this part of the map, so. Doesn't change the state of the game, but does buy them more time and that's exactly what they wanted, Team Clay. Navi, like you mentioned, have the Aegis BKB on the Marcy. How are they going to approach this next phase of the game? Like, as time gets, goes longer, it's harder and harder to find these Arc Warden. Hurricane Pike, eventual Silver Edge, BKB, of course, Slark. He nearly failed to kill off the Arc Warden in that bottom fight, right? Like, with the Sunray, with the constant chase down, it will only get harder. Bottom tower is under attack. Bottom tower has yeah, it's it's a ticking clock, but it's one which you can't really like. You, you you can't just run your face into them, you know. We've already seen them take one fight. They could definitely take more if you're not careful. As uh, Splix forced out here, Shigatsu just causing shenanigans right now. And nice usage off the dark pack, off the double pounce. But now, I mean, this Slark is in an awkward position where he's got none of his survivability available. All he's got is an Aegis and a Depth Shroud. So will likely drop for the first time here. Of course, Depth Shroud buying in a little bit of time. Storm Spirit's got to be careful. Nice four stuff. Gets him out of danger. Gets him out of the Ice Blast. And, uh, well, that's just going to be an Aegis drop for just about nothing. I mean, sure. Okay, you, you get Nefric, gets himself a Tempest double. I don't care about that. It's more time. It's, it's just more resources which Navi are spending. And the price is not good. But now there's no egg. There's no overgrowth. There's no split. You've got to expect Na'Vi to try and use this like 70 second window to get as much as you can. Unfortunately, I look towards how they're hitting this tower in the bot lane. It's what? Living armor. <laughs> Guys, play it. Hit it. Hit it. And our fortification is... This is the story of the game. Na'Vi, they can get all the kills in the world, but as soon as they get to an objective, it just takes so much time. I don't Where think they're going to be trying eggs? to be... Uh, yeah, they're not going to be barreling up the high ground here for sure. It's reset, go again. I honestly feel like we're entertaining the idea of Na'Vi sitting back, looking for picks, and probably waiting for another Roshan before they ever go for tier 3s. Yes, sir. And Klee, they are very aware of that fact, especially with the Aegis being down as well. Sieging's just not a possibility, so... They're just like, hooray, another 10 minutes? Don't mind if we do. Oh, I just really, we have elimination games as well today. That's hype. Yeah, we're going straight up to lower. Yeah, you better I, be it, ready. It just, <laughs> I don't, it just clocked. Like, so of course, right now we are watching Navi versus Klee. Uh, spoilers in three seconds. Three, two, one. Bet Boom did beat Money Maker, so the winner of this series will be playing up against Bet Boom, a formidable team within the region. But the fort that later today as well, the loser will have to play up again, just for their survival in the hope. To get one of the two Eastern European slots to get to Kuala Lumpur. The new format for uh, for the Dota circuit is ruthless. Qualifiers don't get paid. Tournaments, you do. So no, if you're sir. a pro player right now, this is absolutely everything. Get good or get gone. That is the mantra, unfortunately. <laughs> True. Clean. Or get an org. That also helps. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll say that. Or we'll make content. True. Then Maybe I'm just ticked off my way to TI mm. finals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? You didn't win anything all year, quick. but your TikTok's banged. So <laughs> we're going to give you an invite. Congrats. Uh, Clean. Don't leak the panel uh, uh, invite list. Yeah. And here we go, on to Nefrit. Nefrit immediately losing about half his HP, but does get off that BKB regardless. Now, Zayats, well, he has to pop that egg, but he can't quite do it. The Storm Storm being so annoying, finally throws it down. As in the middle of the fight, I mean, it's, it's just no cause really dropping on either side. Finally, Kami, though, Arc he gets died. chased down through the backside of the fight. Days and Dream doing the work together to kill him off. And now, Lays 
Unfortunately, will be losing his life as well as he troops back into panda form. Shigetsu just taking lumps out of him. Nice little Logoseal totem. Not going to be enough, though, as the entirety of Navi chasing onto that high ground, not letting him get away. Four heroes dead on the side of Klee. Navi, that is a clean fight they were looking for, and it all comes from Shigetsu and Days just grouping up together and finding that, that pesky arc ward in the back lines. So difficult for Team Klee to fight. There is so much overwhelming survivability and tankiness, right? You've got the the Ags, the Shard, the Depth fr sh uh, Shroud from the Slark, and then you've got the Slark, uh, sorry, the Razor with the Satanic and the Mantle and the BKB. There's so much stuff, I can't even put it into words. How do they fight? And this is what Na'Vi needed to be able to break the base, to, to wipe four. And mid Rax is to four. They're going to reset, look towards bot lane. And this is always the issue with, with an Arc Warden in, in your team, right? It's unless your lane goes really well, which it was doing, you're in that position of, I hope my team can win me the game and I just break my opponent, right? And I think Team Cleaver were just never really in that position of being able to really muscle up into Na'Vi's aggression, hoping yeah. that Arc would have the farm. And there, there's no there's no real map. I got to say that the way that Na'Vi ganked this Arc Warden two or three times was just such a treat to watch yeah they had his number cami was read like a book gave him a good lane but only to plot his downfall later on in the game and the constant ganks absolutely taking him out of the equation stopping him being a unstoppable force in this game and forcing him to play from behind which uh was never the plan nefrit going for the tormentor anti-armor strats always pretty good against this thing and raise up, no different. We'll be able to get that kill. That's it done. Oh, I just it's so refreshing. I just realized the Kunker. He 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 didn't go for a heart nomad. We're in new territory. He has an octarine. Whoa, cool. It's still as tanky to some degree. More spells, but Oh, it's just it's just nice to not see a heart for once. Good job, manager. Yeah, thanks for Keeping it interesting, bud. I mean, why doesn't he have a heart this game? Mm, he's not really the, the damage soak. Slug and Razor are doing all of it for him. So he kind of can just become more of a spellcaster style player. Like, he could also just go for a Hex, I think, to close out this build right now, right? Like, replace the bottle with a Hex, and then he can go for some, like, Shivas or Overwhelming Blink or something, and then... His, uh, his build looks really, really good. Yeah. It helps that he has two carries, right? Like, the net worth is 23,000 Razor, 20,000 Slark. And it's a 21,000 net worth Arc Warden, but look at the Brew and the Storm, right? Like, these picks, they're very fight heavy. So when the fights aren't going their way, their farm also kind of takes a hit. And it is why you're seeing Kunkka pivoting from the standard. And I think that's what makes a, a good player, is one that can kind of read the game and not just follow the script of the meta. It's only an Octarine core, but it means so much to me, Nomad. <laughs> <laughs> it's really uh, giving you that energy. Well, thanks for a shine. Going to be respawning in 1 minute 30. Both teams have to be aware of that. Get over to that top side. Make your claim. feel like we might not see Klee even going for the next one. We's. We'll see. Young Cheese find always out of the map here. And this time he's been found. Gonna have to pop the BKB here. Feels a little bad, but no other choice. Navi was smoked up. And under the uh, vision of Daytime, we were able to see him before he went into the tree line. And now instantly, Navi are like, guys, there's no storm BKB. Let's go make moves. And they're TPing top lane. And hopefully for them. They shall find some opponents. Yeah. I mean, feels unlikely. I feel like Klee should be reading this one because of Roche. So. We'll see. We'll see. So that's, what's his item in. choice? Oh, he's going for the Hex rather than the Refresher. Okay. Do you think it's gonna, he's going to get it before the game ends? Or even uh, eggs? Yes. Nice timing on the torrent. Another day, another X. Zayat's just, just really making them waste some time. Wait, 
Wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait, wait. Oh, so close. Let the guy live. It was so cool. I mean, he was Overseal, cooking. full stuff, Icarus dive, just flying about all over the place, but does eventually get bored down. Roshan has now respawned. They should be scouting it out any second now. I believe so. Stick your face into that pit. Oh, hello, Mr. Rush. Damn. Okay. Marcy also does a MKB. Just 36 cool. minute BKB MKB. Okay. I was worried because I saw the demon edge and I was like, this means like uh, <laughs> what could it one be? of three things, uh, four things, sorry. And it's like, only one really makes sense or two makes sense. No, she's just going for the disperser. I think disperser is a very good item. Yeah, it's maybe not for for a four minutes for Marcy, Marcy, but okay. The active is incredible. Like being able to like uncap, not uncap the movie, but like to be max movie, zoom around again. Yeah, it's cool. It's very uh, useful in the fights. Yeah, Slot thinks so too. That's why he's building one. Nice. To be fair, he is a yeah. I think anyone who can buy defusal. It just feels so good now that you don't have to like delete the item, right? Like you don't have to sell yeah. it. And when I say delete, I mean sell. We're not just breaking items so in a competitive game, but yeah, it's a very good upgrade. I think uh, in the new patch we uh, supports, we just keep uh, hoping that more upgradable items for our cheap support items, so we can scale as well. But I'm happy the cores get mm, it. No. No. Okay. Fair enough. Not allowed. Not allowed. Supports have had enough through the years. They're eating too good. They're getting yeah, coffee. They're asking for really things well. That's <laughs> true. We're in a good Jeez. place, to be fair. Like, if you play Dodo only in like, the last three years, you you don't know the hardships that those five players have to go through. And in the yeah. game, we're like, bro, it's like, a wand here. Whoa, he's got a four star for 30 minutes. This guy's so farmed. <laughs> good times. Team Cleon uh, having good times though, because they're just stuck in their base. Yeah, but then I kind of feel like they brought this upon themselves. You know, this was part of the game plan. So, okay, so it's their fault. That's fair. Yep. I mean, they've drafted Tree and Protector Arc Warden, man. What do you want from me? Yeah, Nullifier on the Slark as well, so. Gonna give them that extra annoyance onto a lot of these heroes. They're pinging right now, though. They see the Slark. They want to bring him down. I mean, he he's not got an Aegis. He's not got much. Oh, stun. He, does, he didn't get it off. No dark back. He's dead. No teammates oh. here to help out. Great assassination from the side of Klee. No more Slark. Razor had the Aegis. So, yeah. I mean, you just can't be that aggressive. They finally got him, right? Like, after nearly 18 minutes of him just running around. Beautiful orchid timing, uh, orchid timing, but orchid usage. Sorry, to lay her in. It, does it help Klee? Probably not. But these are the small victories you need to to rally the troops once again. Right? It's like, guys, we can yeah. do it. We got the slot. But don't get carried away. I think if Klee just rush out of their base after one kill, they might just get wrapped around. Like when you look at every single hero in Navi, like they have so much kill threat, so much survivability. Like there's what. Three BKBs, a satanic. Yeah, I mean, I, there's no point even listing it all. Like every hero, other than like AA, could survive like 20 seconds of a fight, 25 seconds of a fight. Yeah, it's 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 very hard to burst them down like that. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm still surprised, like the Aegis being on the razor. But nevertheless, mm. we'll see if they're able to do something with it. He would technically Two be the building hitter. Left. Potentially, like the one that wants to step up the high ground, and I think Slark has so many uh, ways of surviving that why not give it to, to Nefret, even though he has his own tools? But we'll see how they uh, they play on it. Stupendous. It kind of yeah. does feel like Slark played like he had an Aegis. Maybe he just was used to it and forgot. But my assumption is the next minute and twenty. The thing is, a minute twenty for an Aegis. That's not a lot of time to like want to end like not. Every time I say end, I kind of mean go to a, take a rex. I need to stop saying end. 
<laughs> when I'm saying and I mean something else, just to be yeah, just, <laughs> just to clarify. Just FYI. For the <laughs> Everything I say, it's not always what I mean, so be yes. ready for that one. <laughs> You've got to filter through my English, guys, please. Yeah. But yeah, with this refresher orb, I don't know. He, he's, he's, he's scary, but he's still not going to take buildings. <laughs> There's no Aghanim. He's really hoping for uh, maybe a day rose or... Yeah. An alchemist to suddenly spawn and give him one. Or an illusion to suck so that he has 400 damage now. Okay. That helps. That definitely helps, yeah. And he's still on attack speed because he got the 25 talent. Oh, cool. I didn't know if he was going to go for that one, but uh, I guess I do now. They got to slow him down. They're going to do exactly that. They just need to wait like another few seconds for that uh, damage to run out. And there you go. Nefrid is mortal once again. But in we go. 14 seconds left on the mortal. Aegis. Yeah, they're going to have to respect it. All right, folks. Games winning it. You know what? Yes, yeah, so we're right to schedule four hours for each of these series. We might need to schedule five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe they were. Yeah, maybe they were wrong in the wrong way. Uh... Okay, Team Clay smoked up themselves. Hooray! <laughs> They're about to run straight into a slot, though. Hello, friend. Yeah, they'll use just about everything on him, but he's got the Dark Pack going, which dead. means he can just bring down days in seconds instead. The Pandas in the back line is just bullying the supports out. Zayats will eventually go down regardless, though. No egg for you. He does have the buyback if he wants to use it. Maldi's still getting beaten up by these Pandas. My goodness. Yep, I'll take him down. Lays gets a double kill. Just the Brulings doing the work in that fight, pretty much. All the damage being dealt from Klee. Was just from those uh, those little boys. I don't know about you, but it kind of feels like the game's shifting kind of clear way. Yeah, I'm starting to like, feel no, it. I don't mean it's not like some crazy shift, but Nobi are just like bouncing around the the extremes of the map. Right, they're going from top to bottom. They're not really trying to go too deep, and every time they do, they are they're losing numbers. And Marcy died in a matter of seconds. It was one vortex into just I nearly like two thousand damage in a literal second. It was insane. Yeah, yeah. It, I sometimes forget that Dark Warden does this, but uh, you know, Silver Edge, Hurricane Pike, Mjolnir. It's mm -hmm. uh, it, it it's clicks. And when he gets his Bloodthorn, it's gonna be even more clicks. Question is on 25, do Arc Wardens go for the no damage penalty on their clone? Or do they just go for duration because they play with their clone a lot nowadays? I'd be intrigued to know which option they go for. I'm guessing it is just left. I will check Pro Tracker because this game is going to last another seven hours. So we will have time to research everything. Arc Warden. They go for... Oh. Left oh, talent. Oh. Left. Okay, they go left talent. They go there's like, there's like 20 games and none of them have got to level 25 <laughs> only like two so it took me a time to scroll to 20 late long games but they both went for left talent which kind of makes sense because you kind of play with your clone arc's not really the most intense split pusher uh, anymore it still is but not to the degree it was in patches past yeah yeah that 50 percent damage reduction is uh kind of insane so i imagine if you're in like some real stalemate game then the other talent could be tempting but no, yeah, they, they, they go for duration, just to clarify. The left talent is the duration yeah. talent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. But for Na'Vi... The other thing is, well, like, Disperser feels like a very good item to go for, like, not early, but it's like a like a mid-game item. So if a slot completing it later down the line, in this game at least, it will have value against the slows of Phoenix and Tree and whatnot, but it isn't, like... Wow, this is the disperser timing, right? Like, I think no. it, it is an item that if you get it by, like, 25, you can break a lot of these early fights. And we will still see it have, like, positive impact in the, in the fights. But I think it hurts when your Slark, after having such an incredible aggressive game, isn't able to, like, keep punching in the big ticket items. Whilst on the other side, a team that's behind, when they pick up an AC, that feels like it's such a massive win, right? Like, if you pick up a BKB... It's a big win, like a hex on storms for it as well. So I think the items in general at the late game, Team Clear are kind of hitting the stride on impact items. 
Boss and Navi are just kind of like rounding off their builds, you know, making everything look nice, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Uh, yeah, very, yeah. very, very disciplined from Navi. You know, definitely feels like uh, they're playing very clean. But every now and again, you know, they, we do see the slip up. We do see the mistake, either individually or team wise. You know, we had that gate play early on. We had the slot getting caught out. So maybe, just maybe, Klee can find a way back into the go game based on those. I mean, again, it does feel like these fights are difficult for Na'Vi. Like, I definitely don't feel like when it's five on five, we know who's going to be taking that, even with his 11k gold advantage. Like, it's just not that much at 45 minutes into the game, especially with the heroes we're seeing on our screens. Brewmaster in the river. Yeah, this is a little scary. I'm going to have to split it up right now. Immediately just trying to get that uh, Storm Panda away, but they know the one to find, and they are going to be able to dust him up and take him down. Uh-oh, Lay's in some trouble. I'm not sure he's getting out of this one, unfortunately. The Earth Panda being beaten down next. I mean, it's 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 tricky to finish the job. This, this thing is super tanky, 4,400 HP, so instead they're just going to turn around and get the clone. See you later, Tempest Double. That was incredibly spooky for a second, but... You can see the state of the game for, for Klee, right? Like, the, the Brewmaster goes for, like, a later Manta with the Radiance as well. You just keep shoving out the waves, and with an Arc Warden, a tree, like, yeah, it is just going to be a game of defense. I would be surprised if Klee really left their base. They, I think, like, fighting in their base or fighting in their triangle with really good vision are, like, the two spots for them to really fight. I think running all the way to Roshan is a little bit scary, and you might have to concede it. But we will see if they uh, they think otherwise. I love this Roshan army just respawned. coming down the middle lane for Klee. They've got two Brewmaster Illusions, they've got this uh, Arc Warden, they've got Lightning Creeps, you know, it's sort of terrifying. But yeah. over on the top side, Na'Vi, they are in the pit. Double damage on Slark, by the way. That'll help things out a lot. Roshan going to start to drop. Klee, what is your answer? Surely you cannot let this one go. Surely you have to say something about this Roshan that's being attempted from Na'Vi. But there is no response. There is no answer. Still content just to stay and avoid these fights. I'm still yet to see a pro team actively wait for Roshan to change to daytime for the Axe. Like, obviously yeah, here same. it was like three to four minutes. So it's kind of a little bit awkward, but... I think, like, if in the stalemate nature of, like, this game, I think there is a world where, like, let's say it was, like, 48 minutes, 48.30. I could have seen Navi maybe just waiting for it to to move the bot. Um, but, again, we're yet to see that perfect sync up of the, like, I think one minute window is good enough if you have, like, the correct uh, type of draft. Like, this game, clear never leaving their base, so you'd be able to do it. In other games, it's super hard to get punished, right? But I am excited for the day where, like, the teams tactically go... Guys, wait for the ages. Go, 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 go. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, yet to happen, but yeah. I don't know. I feel like it's 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 scary. You know, it's just it's a it's a scary thing to do. You need to be very trusting that your team can hold the game in a stalemate for the amount of time it takes. Which, yeah, I don't think this game is it. Like, clearly capable of getting out of their base and making plays. <laughs> clearly capable. Clearly <laughs> capable, yes. I mean, the Blink Dagger train is a huge gift for them as well. I, I love this. It just gives you some cheap initiation. I'm talking about cheap initiation. That jump in Ags pull from the Storm Spirit. Also going to be now a big threat when you're coming up this high ground. Very little damage done to the tower here, honestly. Very insignificant siege attempt from the side of Na'Vi. And Even Melody they have did not ages. wait to use his spells. Like Storm did one zip, instant torrent stop, boat, go, 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 go. Yeah. Yeah, he's got this refresher shard, so I'm more than happy to just throw this crap down. Not to mention this Octarine core as well, of course. Built very early on, and we'll do exactly that. Split is used though. Is now over, so 40 seconds to play with no Brewmaster Ultimate available. This is such a hard high ground to break. 
is brutal, isn't it? And now they jump on, they hide the Hex out onto the Razor, and he's just dead. They don't help him out at all. Although they managed to catch out the Arc Warden, but he's got the BKB and four staff away to get himself to safety. Days is going to go down as well. No one went in with Marcy there. It was a suicide mission, to say the least. Mardi now getting brought down as well. Double Glimmer Cape, not going to save his life here. He will also fall. A horrific attempt at a high ground here from the side of Navi, and that one's going to hurt. Yeah, I think Navi, they, uh, they're going to be kicking themselves in this game. After having such a beautiful, like, mid-game of aggression, the ages prior to this one, they just weren't able to utilize it to its full efficiency. And now with their second Aegis, they give it to the to the Slark, but the Razor dies, right? Like, the previous Aegis, Razor has it, but Slark dies at the top tier 3 area when they could have been sieging. And then, you know, everything unfolds, they can't use it. And then this time around... Sl Razor wants to go up and hit the high ground. It's incredibly hard into Fire Spirits, Living Armor, Brewmaster, Radiance. But then the Slug doesn't die. So it's like, I feel like the two Aegises that Na'Vi have had, which are kind of like the ones you need to end the game with, just haven't been perfectly utilized. And meanwhile, Kami on his Arc Warden is like, <laughs> this game's not ended yet. Let me enter my fun part. You know, like he's got his MKBs, yep. his Silver Edge. Like he's... He is incredibly hard to kill, especially when he's parked by his tier fours. Yeah, exactly. You got to go so deep in to find him. Like you got to commit super hard to the fight, and that's so scary to do up that high ground. Marcy did it, but nobody else. And to be fair, Day's like almost kind of chunked down the Arc Warden 100 to zero by himself. Like that shit is scary. Like Day's is is a menace. The problem is he's just not finding ways into the fight to be on the target he wants to be on, which is that Arc Warden. Like, yeah, he, he gets off one, maybe two volleys on the Arc Warden, but then it's just... The spells come off, the damage comes in, and days goes down. No defensive ability. It also doesn't ability. help that Narvi's entire draft is about... Kind of... Hold on a second, we're watching a clone die top. Is about playing around movement, right? Marcy wants to jump in, Slark wants to jump in and out. Razor wants to use distance for static link. So when you have all those factors and you throw it at a tier three, the strengths of their heroes are basically reduced by half, right? Because they can't dive past the tier three. They can, but then there's tower auras. There's potential multi-shot from towns if they fortify. It's just really hard to take a fight there. So like yeah. Navi's draft, and we were mentioning it during the draft, it's like they are very, very strong in killing. But if the game ever was to get to a stagnant point, it is so hard for them to end it. And now, from a 12k lead all the way to team... Uh, let me triple check so I don't mispronounce. It was Klee. Uh, Klee are now in the lead. Smoke on smoke action, though. Both wrapping yeah, around. Klee does hold the high ground. Yeah, looks like Navi are going to miss them. Heading all the way around. They don't know. They're not sure what direction they want to approach this from. Well, they are, actually. That's what they're trying to get to. But uh, Klee are gone. They have already ran to the other side of the map. And both teams seem to have no idea where the other is, so. It's not, not often you see the perfect the smoke night. dodge, right? But that was yeah. truly poetic to watch. Yeah, Klee just don't don't want to play. They're just like, oh, we'll smoke to dodge their smoke. <laughs> yeah. 60 minutes looking likely to be honest with you unless this next roche fight is an absolute belter which i mean it could be it does look like clue clear have kind of woken up and are looking to fight so we'll see how this next engagement does end up going we are yet to get a 60 minute game in the eastern european qualifiers we were close in game one 59 minutes we eight seconds yep but this could be the game we have been how many blessed minuses do we with still the long have? games today <laughs> Brewmaster and Phoenix still clutching onto their minuses all the way until the uh, the 60 minutes mark. Just gotta remember also not, not to... level 25, so it's. I think it'll be like get tier five, get 25, sell. Yep, that sounds efficient to me. Kind of insane that it's 53 minutes in. This Brewmaster isn't level 25 with Midas. I guess that's it's because of when... his build, right? Like the Manta Radiance. Yeah. He's never actually with the wave he's pushing. So he's got his his gold. He's farmed, but not uh, not leveled, not fully juiced yet. No, but he's very close. It's very close to full juice. And Is anyone out full juice at the moment? 
it has taken like 54 minutes to get here, but this is the part of Arc Warden where it's like, wait a second, the lanes aren't pushing into our base. I can now just constantly pressure their buildings. What a feeling. And the net worth we were praising earlier about how Slark and um, the Razor were basically, what, like 22k? Arc was 21 and everyone else was 16,000 gold. Now look at it. The Brewmaster is about to, it has overtaken Slark, is slowly catching up to Razor. The Storm's about to overtake the, the Slark. I think, yeah, Team uh, Clay did an, an exceptional job at being able to stabilize this one. They did, they did. They kind of uh, prove once again that there is a reason they play this kind of Dota and it's because they know how to do it so well as they jump in, fight absolutely no one on their mind. They managed to connect onto the Tree and Protector. The Tree and Protector would be a good target, but a jump the in vortex. from the Storm's going to buy a little bit of time. Immediate buyback coming in. There is the Egg, but Shigetsu's on it in a splash, but no, change the target. Looking for Kami. Kami, loading out of HP. He's gone. There is not going to be an Arc Warden here. The Egg comes crashing on down, but with no Arc Warden, it's really hard for them to stand and fight this one. Zayats is gone. Melodil still just sitting on the front lines, fighting up. Hex out onto the Storm throw him across into another torrent storm my god they're gonna take him out again nefrit just taking through everybody right now this this goddamn razor is an absolute beast kami he needs to bring him down here and he needs to do it fast and they will be able to do so the buybacks are in from the side of clee and that will mean they get the fight navi they don't really have a way to buy back and get back into this engagement therefore they just kind of have to accept their losses they also don't have the buybacks interestingly they don't, but also for Klee, it's going to be a long Roshan spawn. It's about 2 minutes, 10 seconds. So Ooh, for them, they aren't able to get this set of kills and go, don't worry, quick Roshan. It's unlucky for them in that regard. And yeah, the, the buyback status, not looking too healthy for Na'Vi. Slark is missing it by about 1,800 gold. AA also missing it about 200 gold. So the next time they fight Na'Vi, you would expect them to have a full team of buybacks if Slark is able to farm it. Never... Yeah, this is kind of brutal because like, okay, sure, they take the middle barracks. N not that important at this point. Uh, Klee? LA? Sorry? Wait, what's... What, what, what's their happening base is falling, I mean, so they are buybacking it... to defend their base, yep. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure the buyback was... Uh, I guess it... Uh... I, I, I'm not sure about that buyback, to be honest with you, but to be fair, they've done so much damage to the base in this short amount of time. Things are getting spooky for Na'Vi, mate. That's 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 all we can say, all right? Yeah, yeah, but Clee are also playing without buybacks. So once all the heroes are back up, it's kind of an even game. Roshan, 45 seconds. Kami setting up with the Spark Wraiths. He has the Agony Blessing. He brought it out on his courier. Of course, not having buyback, he just invested. And the uh, what the Agony does, if you get hit by a Wraith, it will then spawn another Wraith on you. So it just makes the control of fights even harder, especially when you littered the Roshan pit with like eight or nine of them. Yeah. So he's could gone just jump in just... and insta-kill himself. Oh it could also insta-kill Roshan is... potentially if he can build up enough. But he's not I building don't... them outside the pit. I think it's really hard nowadays. Like back in the day when you had that ridiculous spark wraith talent you could, but... Yeah, oh could yeah, be wrong. Does, does he have talent anymore? No, he doesn't. All right, he can't insta-kill. He has one, but... but he didn't take it at 20. Sure, 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 sure. He could... Half kill Roshan. There you go. Yeah, that's <laughs> refactor my uh, my my. But speech. he's not he's not using them on Rosh. He's using them around no. the pit, so it's not. Gonna yeah, be yeah. So if he actually spammed all of them, it'd have been like half-ish, I think. Yeah. I just saw over. based on the ones he pressed. Oh, there's a fight happening. Hex Hold out up. onto the Brewmaster. Brewmaster in trouble. He does have the buyback, and he's gonna have to use it. Meanwhile, that's just gonna take down the tree. They're just ripping through the heroes. I mean, sure, you get this Aegis, but how much is it worth? Refresh the shard on the deck as well. Slark's going to pick that one up, and that's actually a big deal. They'll deal with the Tempest double, and now they're looking for more. Melodil immediately searching, but won't be finding this my uh, young G. He doesn't have a BK. He doesn't have a TP out for another four seconds. If Melodil finds him here, tree. it could be awful. Oh, they don't see him. The one tree. He might have just to suck well. in his gut and hide behind it. My God, no, that was so scary. Navi were just like running at the pit, just like not even killing heroes, just slaughtered, like beheading them in one swing and moving on to the next. They're desperately trying to kill Roche as quickly as possible and they do manage to do it. But yeah, Cheese now on Storm, Aegis on Arc. Navi though, they're looking to do some damage here. I'm not sure how much they can do with this. I'll be honest, but let's see. Look at Cleese like defense. Do or die. They don't have buyback. So running up here, if they die, it's... It could just be over. This feels like a very forced play. How important is the tree, honestly? I don't know. Let's see. 
If there's not a tree, there's an arc warden. If there's not an arc warden, there's a tree. If there's not either, there's a storm zipping past the wave. It's it's yeah. one of the most toxic high ground defenses, Melodil and that's why they're breaking in. in. They're immediately looking for the Phoenix. Phoenix is going to get pulled down super quickly here. Does not have the bite, so he's going to be taken out for the long run. Can he, meanwhile, just sitting in the back, just trying to help out his Storm. They need to save it. Oh, he forces himself. I'm not sure that was intentional. Storm, he used the cheese. It's not enough, though. He is gone, but he's the one buyback hero, so he can come back into the game. And now, Navi, they need to leave, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to do so. Shigetsu just being taken down from all sides. He's out of defensive abilities. Sure, Mardi is oh, gone, but uh, now Nefrid gets uh, taken out of the front lines goes in to save the slugs not able to do so 120 seconds with no razor oh no and treant's back as well i think it might be Klee's time to take to the high ground how much can they do with this 110 seconds on the razor they don't have their phoenix though so there is a chance they still pay respects to navi let's see i i i, I can't believe that nifra just he, he blinked in with a swift blink pressed satanic and then click he, he had no one to click like Razor isn't the the most punchy of satanic heroes. It's kind of like a <laughs> satanic on time. He just died instantly. Uh, oh no, no, T! The first time I've seen it. Click on the Marcy. Block of cheese. Block <laughs> of cheese, baby. <laughs> I oh, yeah, you, you, Reddit, you thought right? Clee were, were looking for the late game with their minuses. Hell no, Navi. They get the block of cheese. They give it to the Slark. Didn't it, like I swear I saw, I've not checked it yet because I literally woke up and saw the Reddit post. But wasn't there some like I'll, I'll double check it, but so, something's changed Eat about it. it supposedly based on Reddit. Eat it. Eat the block of cheese. It's sitting in his backpack. What's happening? A fight, well, mate. Yeah, Bastard. they're going for the Arc Warden. They're going to take his Aegis. This is pretty bad. And now they'll look over towards the Triumph Protector. He just gets absolutely eviscerated. They're going to need some help for Kami right now. Forced up up to the high ground. But look at Shigetsu and Days just trying to chase him down with the Hexes there along with the Vortex. That's going to hold back the Marty at the very least. But Shigetsu, he's not giving up the goat. He's staying on the Arc Warden. He's going to take him down as well. Gets the kill. And now Kami, well, his Tempest double. How much can it do? It needs to do a lot before it turns out. And it is. There's so much damage being pumped out of this Arc Warden. It's going to kill off the Slark. Both carries are dead. Well, I mean, <laughs> I didn't expect that. All I'm saying is if he ate the block of cheese, he'd have lived there. Because he'd have had the buff, just saying. Like, he'd have had the shield. That would have been, like, the extra 200-300 HP. To... Block of cheese could be the game-deciding reason. Why <laughs> Where the hell is it? Did He, he ate it. I guess he, just ate. he ate it? Okay. Wait, no, he just gave it to someone else. Who... Wait, someone else ate it. He gave it to Where Razor. Cheese? He gave it to Razor, all right. Yeah, yeah I just read yeah, yeah. And he's he's figured out how to eat it. Okay, good job. Yeah. The savory shield is in action. <laughs> uh, tier, tier five items, by the way, also very important. As uh, Brewmaster right. tries to just take the mega creeps, isn't able to do so. I can't believe that Team T just ran down mid and just... Like, they had this incredible... Okay, it's this is a really weird game. No matter, I'll yes. be honest. Yes, it is. Um, I hope you guys looked at the tier 6. We've got Mirror Shield on Slark. We've got Book of Shadows on Conker. We've got... Thank you. A token on someone. Two Mirror Shields up on Kami and Zayats. Another Book of Shadows on the Storm Spirit. So both mid laners have the Book of Shadows. That's kind of cute. Uh, Zayats looking to make his own block of cheese. Long way off, though. You got Book of the Dead now coming out from Tree and Protector. That's pretty big. And Navi, well, they're on the Klee high ground. They say, we don't need Slark. Fuck that guy. We can do it without him. Well, they have Axe. They can actually hit buildings. Holy moly. Yeah. And, I mean, block of cheese. Oh, it doesn't get disabled from enemy damage now. I see. Okay. Yeah, there we That's go. kind of insane. Look at it. Look at that. Uh, is this balanced? He's, 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 he's taking a bit of damage. All right. So block of cheese is actually good now. Got it. Okay, yeah. noted. So it used to just be a shield that buffered, and then you'd have to leave the fight, and it respawns and stuff. And I could, I was trying to find out what actually changed to it. it was Whoa! On some we got a bit of ratting going on. Squeak, squeak. But they haven't got uh, megas yet. To go if he went megas for megas, that could have been a little bit better. Dude, that block trying. of cheese is kind of hype now. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah, I'm like, on board. Like seeing it just constantly tick up. That is. They might have, uh... <laughs> imagine that on a Slark. Imagine if he actually ate that in the previous fight. 
Yeah, he'd have been absolutely fine in that fight. 100%. No, but uh, not even that. But, like, killing a Slark's already annoying. He's already got insane regen in fog. But now imagine, like, daytime regening in vision what? fog. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you mean. Like, usually when he's inside that ultimate, you're using, like, kind of AoE tick damage to just keep him not full HP, and that's not really an option anymore. But look at this Tempest double. He's going for it again, and he's going to get it this time around. Mega creeps up for the side of Clay. Razor now with the Stygian Desolator as well. Yeah, they need everything they can, because I think for Na'Vi, when they get to the base, they need to break it they can't sit in this awkward like maybe we kill it maybe we don't phase they need to be decisive and they've got the stygian on their oh, throat show me marcy right now a giant ring on marcy oh she's so big she's got bkb too she's gonna get bigger someone's fantasies is being fulfilled in this game shout out to that one guy in twitch chat it's having a great time <laughs> at Nomad Casting. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm the guy in Twitch. <laughs> I'm a little bit uh, upset we didn't see Book of the Dead for Na'Vi. I think that type of item would have assisted a little bit more with their siege. Like, get Stygian, get a Book of the Dead. Then you throw some, like, Giant's Ring on Mars and you, like, just stat up, build up, and then just go. For now, now that they're against yeah. Mega Creeps. It's kind of toxic with a team with Mega Creeps has... Book of the Dead, Book of the Dead plus yeah. Tempest Double, plus Brulings, like... Jesus. Ooh. Almost level really 30 on there for it. He's a bit of a beast now. Yeah, I mean, every, there's a lot of level 30s coming out, right? You know, Slart's close to 30, Kunkun's close to 30, Razor oh, close Rapier. to 30. Like, the, the XP it is going the way of Na'Vi. The way that um, Klee have been playing has been about pushing lanes from a distance so there's a massive xp advantage for radiant it's just it's not really translating into the game because clear is just taking the objectives much much easier yeah and some scuffed fights coming out from navi makes the difference uh yeah melodil does have a rapier by the way i don't know if we touched on that one but i saw it come into the mix he still <laughs> can't win one just hit like... a creep wave it's pretty awkward yeah <laughs> i'm not impressed <laughs> sorry he needs like a Daedalus now. Like, so he's basically gone from being the water park Kunker, still is because he ate the eggs. But now he's yeah. like, okay, I now need to be a right clicker. But we're. It's just, just like, it's there. It's just he does short. 600 damage base, you know? It, 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 should, it should look better than this, but. But look at this creep wave mid. Look at. Look, look, yeah. look. Eh. Okay, he doesn't okay, that one. Did okay. Why did he not kill the other one then? Oh, well. I don't know. Science. Yes. <laughs> this is really well, enthralling gameplay. Is that exiting? Off we go again. <laughs> there is a Roshan going on, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to see one of the creeps. Survive. Anyway, uh, Roshan is going down. That's going to be uh, another Aegis, a refresher. <laughs> cheese. Oh, wait. Second block of cheese. Zayats. He's got two greater healing lotuses. He needs one more. Yo, we're going to get some Lotus on Lotus action right now. Okay. We need, what, how many more is that? And he's like, Wait, some Lotus on You mean block of cheese on block of cheese action? I meant, yeah, I meant block of cheese on block of cheese action, but like Lotus okay. action, because Zayats might misclick it, but yeah. We're oh, close. Lotus he yet. needs okay. one more greater healing Lotus. Yeah. Are That's going to take bottom? a little while. There's one bottom. There's only There's three available. Top. Yeah. Maybe Radiant could just donate them. <laughs> don't don't <laughs> siege for five minutes. We'll give you. <laughs> Make a deal. Yeah. Trade deal. Like what, a, what a dirty way to win a game from Klee. I'm not complaining, but I don't think they'll be happy with this win either if they are to close it out. This is this is a, a conflicting like game. Till the end, and Lays will be very happy with the win. I feel like the more experienced players might be a bit like, eh, it, it was a bit rough around the edges, but they'll take it. Any I feel win like you're going to have to be course. happy with it to keep your... Yeah, no, no, yeah. again, if you win, attitude. you're happy. It's more like, you're happy for the tournament, but you're kind of like, ah, I wish we did this better, you know? Like, you get like the little itch in your brain scratching, like, ah, we need to execute mm. cleaner and stuff. But, of course, yes, upper bracket advantage. Syndrome. There are two slots in Eastern Europe, guys. So if you can get to the upper bracket finals, you have two chances to get to Kuala Lumpur. That is insane. 
Hex up on the store. I'm seeing a Nakanora comp. Anyway, uh, yeah, BKB is coming out. Day is going to be all right. Just a few shots being fired running towards through each mid. other. Yeah, the laser's just being super annoying, trying to threaten the tier fours. Not really working out too well, though. Losing a couple of uh, mini pandas in the process. Baby pandas. It's just so crazy. It's just impossible to poke Nefrit. Like, he's insane. Okay, it's not impossible. Um... It's not impossible. That's more than a poke, though. That is a prod, but it's... Oh, Depth Shroud! Depth Shroud! Depth Shroud saves him! Ooh, he gets away, blinks himself out. And how is that committed as well, so... Cammy, happy to kind of sit here on the front lines with this Tempest double. Very, very hard to bring it down. Just kidding, super easy to bring it down. Swoop in from Zayat. Big commitment comes in. Uh, kind of gets shit to it, but it's it's not quite enough. Nefret's going to have to pop the BKB, but don't forget, Refresher Orb's still available from him, so he'll be okay. Klee, once again, lays just focusing on those tier fours, trying to bring them down. They need to get themselves away, though. They're starting to lose heroes on the side of Klee. Already two dropping. All the Brulings have Day been killed off, but Day's taking a lot of damage inside of this. They get the first life off the Arc Ward. Now he comes back, but he doesn't have anything defensive to help him through his second life, and he is now going to die. Phoenix chased down by Day's on the sidelines as well, so three heroes dead, one bought back. And Storm, he's going to be the only survivor on the side of Klee. They take a tier four tower, but that is all. Oh, what a beautiful game as well. I mean, like, this game is weird. It's like back and forth, but like the fact that you have like the team that was behind and then they, they finally claw their way back in and they're the ones being aggressive. They're trying to close Wait. it out, but then they're still dying. And what? Where cheese? Cheese got used. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, oh, well. No block of cheese versus no block, second of, block cheese. of cheese. But the buybacks, look at it right now. Everyone has buyback bar tree. So if Nova be able to then force the Brew Arc and Phoenix buyback, game gets a little bit spooky again. Even if they're against Mega Creeps, any time big cores don't have buybacks, one kill could be the meaning. And Nefrit with the Agonims, it's crazy. If he bought this earlier in the game, they could have yeah, probably We wouldn't just, be here. <laughs> we wouldn't be here. Oh, A had Book of the Dead. Nice. We, uh... Oh, Pug. Took a little bit longer. I saw he had the two token, but he didn't click one, but... I saw a Necronomicon unit running around, and I didn't bother speculating yeah. on it. The Radiant one. Getting jumped. Yeah, that's a decent amount of damage coming through onto Nefrit, but once again, you know, has the BKB, has the Satanic, should be <gasps> fine. No, man, we might have Megas and Megas action here, potentially. It's very possible. In, in fact, likely, because they don't want to use these buybacks right now, but they will take the base in time. Nefrit does more than enough damage to bring down these buildings. <laughs> mega creeps gained by the Radiant side. And if everyone has mega creeps, no one has mega creeps. The game is completely even now. Time for another 70 minutes to gameplay. When was the last time you saw a Megas on Megas game where it didn't just end like minutes <laughs> after? Like this is like a, a true Megas on Megas. Everyone has buyback, bar Phoenix yep. and tree. Kami is trying his best to try and take another tower. No, neither team has fortification either. Like, all the buildings are exposed. Luckily for Klee, they do have tree, so they are lip, uh, healing up their tier fours. But so who's who's fully juiced? Kami is full, is is fully juiced. He's, he's got the moon shard. He's got an eaten eggs. He's got extra items in his in tree. Um, Alright, let's just dissect the 72 minutes of items that everyone has, alright? Um, everyone screenshot real quick. Slark is not, is not fully forever. juiced. Confirmed. No. He hasn't eaten his eggs. He doesn't have a moon shard. He's pretty poor, actually. Yeah, I think when you look at these general items, I think Dyer are stronger in the fight. They have a lot more hexes, yeah. a lot more control, a lot more just general damage, whilst Malady, of course, as an AA, only got the eggs. It's like he hasn't transitioned to being like the insania triple rapier AA yet, you know? But Yeah. Uh Nefrit could be could be full. He needs to just get the moon shard and he's there. Yeah, and he does have buyback gold and moon yeah, shard if he wants to go for it. I think what we're learning gold. though is <laughs> Klee was really good at taking the objectives once they crossed the river, but their ability to actually fight is still relatively weak compared to Na'Vi, right? Like, if you ever find the Arc Warden, the fight's already over. And it's what we were praising Klee on, because they were great at defending their base, they were great at ratting and sieging their opponent's base,
But in the actual way to win a game, which is the team fight, this Arc Warden is still relatively redundant because there's a Slark and a Razor jumping on top of him. And now that we have Megas on Megas, it really is anyone's game. I feel like if Klee get too excited and try and get to the base, they could just die and get forced to buy back. If Na'Vi get too excited and run to the tier 4 area of the Dire base, then the Arc hiding inside their fountain, it could be too hard to kill. So it's like neither team wants to be the aggressors because they've had moments where they both fell flat due to the defensive nature of Klee in their base or the inability to actually kill things when they're in the Radiant base. Like we are in a stalemate. We are in the first series of three today. We are <laughs> never leaving today, boys. Potential of nine games. And this is game three. All right. I can't <laughs> wait. I, no, man. I, I, honest, I can't wait. We have a 15 minute delay on stream, right? And right now I see Twitch chat. They got their Omega laws out in full force. They are laughing in the face of Na'Vi. But just wait until the Keck W's return. Because Na'Vi yeah, yeah, did bring it to, back. Uh... Like, I oh, I'm just, I'm just here to see Twitch chat just laugh at themselves at this point. This is yeah, that's true. Also, haven't had breakfast yet, and it's twelve fifteen. So I'm gonna yeah. put my address in chat if someone can send me some food. The uh... <laughs> holy shit, Zaya's almost dead. He actually gets the egg off in time, but they've got the attack speed to rip through it regardless, and that will no be buyback. a dead phoenix. Yes, indeedy. Is this the opening we were looking for? The one hero without buyback is the one oh, they find. The They'll find till buyback. the end as well. And he, uh, the two heroes with buyback without buyback look are the ones they lane. find. But look at the base. Lay's just running in immediately, trying to take down the tier four and doing a terrible, terrible job at it. His pandas just get killed instantly, but he did drag the heroes back. That's what's important. And look at the Tempest double as well. Also causing issues. Sure, they both have mega creeps, but who has the pushing power? Who has the lanes? It is, of course, Klee. But they need to keep doing this for 90 more seconds at the very least. It, it's pretty difficult, honestly. They have to keep Navi. the knife at Navi's neck. But the thing is, in these types of games, when it's so chaotic. Did they time the buybacks of Klee? It's only a minute or two for them to respawn or have the ability of having buyback, right? So if they charge down with confidence, they've timed it. They're aware. If not, they could second guess themselves when they walk up the steps and... Navi, there is a one minute window, no buybacks. Let's assume that they know they're not available. Let's see what they can do. Immediate jump in onto the race. They want to try and take it down as quickly as possible using the Brulees, losing the Hex, but they don't have the damage and Storm has to back himself away because there's a Marcy charging on his face. Storm has actually just had to tornado himself up. He does manage to get away. Kami, his little Tempest double in the front lines, just trying to chase back the side of Na'Vi. They're not looking to kill them. They're just looking to get them out of their base. Delay, delay, delay. That has been the game plan from Klee. Tempest double being jumped. Damage there. Merger comes in. They'll take out the Tempest double for the first time. It should be back on cooldown pretty soon. They've got score on the side. He's dead. Buyback. buyback available. They're going to have to start using these buybacks right now if they want to stay in this game. Storm, he's coming back used. into it in just a second. Boat's coming in. Blade's going to have to be careful on the sideline. He has got another split available. They're going for the Ancient. They're going for the end. I don't know if they can stop them. The BKBs are out they on the side of Na'Vi. They're split across the fire. But that said, the invasion from Kami, it's there. The orbs are doing the work. Nefrid, he's got to back himself away. Buyback's coming leave. out from the side of Navi as well. It's Storm on the run, and they've got to be able to chase him down and get the kill. So the buybacks are used, but the kills are gotten. And now oh. I think it might be Klee's time to try the run down oh. middle strategy. I'm getting flashbacks to that game where we Miracle Arc Warden just keeping the button. And then we need a pause. We yeah, need a quick pause, pause really? quick pause, everyone. Okay, that's a nice quick one. It's a nice quick <gasps> one. <laughs> uh, Slark just on Go. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so either way, we saw the fact that Arc Warden with the bubble, Navi, if, like. They, oh, okay, so what's their strat here? Need some, like. I mean, the, the giant giant ring walk, can you walk to the center with giant Wait, ring? wait, wait, wait. Can what are Navi doing? They're going for the end? Are they going for the end? They have There's no way they have the razor. damage, right? They have, they have two bots too. They're trying to end the game before Ark's in position, but they have Book of the Dead. I think they can, maybe they can backdoor it. It's half you HP. You think they've no got the backdoor? They can go through. No oh, way. Go 
They're going for it. They're going, They're going for, for it. it. It's a bold strategy. Is it going to pay off? No. The Ancient. It's getting low. It's getting low. Where is the Arc Lord? It's He's not here to defend it in time. Up. They need more. They need more. They need more. Click. Click. <laughs> Click. Click. Be enough? Click. Hit the oh. Ancient. Hit the Ancient. You've got it. <laughs> <laughs> what an ending. Back to...